That is a powerful song. My goodness. Ooh. <laughs> we want to thank the worship team. Thank you, thank you so much, the grandchild of Mr. Chigozi. Thank you so much. Uh, I think anointing can be generational. <laughs> but, but the father, the zeal that we saw in the late Chigozi has now come upon his grandson. It's beautiful. Those who don't know Chigozi, go and do your research in the revivals or revival in Uganda. I want to greet you this morning. How are you? Wow. I, I, I must confess I miss you. Yeah. I, I am now looking at empty benches except a few people, but really it is not like it should be. Ah, I pray the day will come we can gather again as a family of God. I especially miss our children and my grandchildren. Ah, the, the laughter, the screams, the cries of children in the church compound, I miss that. But we trust God. Amen. Amen. We've come a long way. We've talked about uh, Enoch. We talked about Abraham. We talked about Sarah. We talked about Jephthah. We talked about Joseph. We talked about Rahab. We talked about many people who are called heroes of faith. I want to ask if there's anybody out there who can help me write a book. I have got so much material that I want to uh, bring into a book format. If you're a good writer, there are many sermons and sermon notes that I can give you and you can put, help me put a book together. If you are there, please let me know or contact Mr. Gideon or Mago. We can work together. I want to write a few books before the end of the year. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for this house. This house was planted by your servants almost 60 years ago. And it continues to thrive and touch this nation. Thank you. Even this morning, you were sending for your word to transform lives. Father, be glorified thereby. Lead us as we open your word. Open our hearts. Open understanding. Feed your people. Inspire your people. Touch them. Transform them. Heal them. Encourage them. Give them hope. Strengthen them. And all these things, Father, I pray that you will be glorified. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want us to read one verse. We shall read that verse in three versions of the Bible. Just for purposes of clarity and emphasis. So we shall read one verse. But read it in the new NIV, Living Bible, and the King James Version. I want us to read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. 39. Hebrews chapter 11. 
39. I'm reading from the NIV. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. And then I'm reading from the Living Bible. The Bible says, says, and these men of faith, though they trusted God and won his approval, none of them received all that God had promised them. Lastly, I want to read from my favorite version, the King James Version. It says, all and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Now it's Mamba Uganda. Amen. And now we born now. We've been malok tegeze. We all oko kiri zapa we. Never tafuna echa suvizibwa. This morning I have a message entitled "An Answered Prayer." En chali don ino buba kabwe mpise esala tadi duam. An answered prayer. Esala etaya nukudove tadi duam. I will define it later. But I want us to look at this text closely this morning. Get your pen and notes ready. And keep your Bibles open. This verse conveys a mystery to us. It's a paradox. It's uh, yes, because from verse 1 to verse 32 of Hebrews chapter 11, we have a record of miraculous events, powerful miracles, People walking in the middle of the Red Sea on dry land. Barren wombs conceiving after 25 years. Walls of Jericho collapsing. We've seen how Jephthah became a mighty warrior. Uh, we saw how Joseph, by faith, told his people to take his bones and bury them in the promised land. And he assured them that God would deliver them from the fiery furnace of slavery in Egypt. They spent over 400 years in slavery in Egypt. It was a miracle for them to be set free and go to the promised land. Now we come to the end of the narrative on faith. And the writer gives us this statement that by faith, some people did not receive their promise. It doesn't make sense. How do you make that the climax of the book, of the, of the chapter on faith? Yeah. You would expect something even more grand to be talked about at the end of, uh, uh, of chapter 11 that talks about faith. But as the writer winds down his narrative on faith, he makes this mysterious statement. He says in verse 39, through faith, some people do not receive their promises. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. So this morning, we have a mystery to explore. And I pray with all my heart God will speak to you and to me too. This verse reveals reveal to us that there are times when people by faith 
have unanswered prayers. Unanswered prayers are like a mother. All of us have a mother, or at least we have had we have had one. All men and women who walk on this earth were born by a woman. All of us have a mother. Or at least we had one. Maybe she's gone, she's now dead. In the same way, every person walking on the face of the earth, one day you will encounter an unanswered prayer. There will be a time in your life when you experience unanswered prayer. How do we define unanswered prayer? Unanswered prayer is where God says no to your request. Write this down. Unanswered prayer is when God says no to your request. Have you ever prayed for someone with all your heart and you fasted and the person died? I have. It is hurting, but God says no. Have you ever believed that you would get a particular job and you fail to get that job. You prayed with all your heart to get this job. You wrote a good, you gave in a good CV. You thought that you had a good interview with the panelists. But in the end, you failed to get the job. Have you been in a relationship expecting to get married but the other party changed their mind <laughs> have you ever prayed for someone these things happen to believers too have you ever prayed honestly for something only for God to say no what should we do when God says no to our honest prayers. How does someone deal with unanswered prayer? How do you handle God's no? People say that when we pray, there are three ways God answers prayer. God may say yes. He may say wait. Or he may say no. The first two are not as too difficult. <laughs> but the third one, when God says no, how does a believer handle that? The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 39, tells us even that is handled by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I want to begin by saying this. When God says no, to your prayer request, always expect something better from an answered prayer. I want that to sink into your spirit. Whenever God says no, I repeat, always expect something better from your unanswered prayer. I I want to illustrate this by giving two examples in the Bible. May the Lord speak to you this morning. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, let's read verse 26-28. Uh, 
26-28. Open your Bibles. Let's read together. Deuteronomy 26 up to verse 28. I'm reading from verse 26. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. The Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee. Speak no more unto me of this matter. 27. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah. Lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward. And behold, eat with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. 28. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before these people. He shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. Yaposoma. Amen. And now you come and answer me. Where did I say? Kuba mwe. Na ata na ata Mukama nanga banti. Chikumale. Toyogera na tena ange kuchigambe chuo. Habiri musamvu linya kunti koya pisuga. Oyi musama sogo otunule ebogwanjuba. No buchika obwa kono. No obwa dio. Ne buvanjuba. Olave na masogo. Kubanga. Toli somo kayo dani guno. Habili mnana na yeku utida yoswa omugumie omuwa amanyi. Kubanga ye alisomoka nga kule mbe la bantuvano. Era ye alibasa ensi joli naba. Moses has led Israel up to the brink of all entering the promised land. Muso no akule mbe dabana ba isa ilipaka kunjoga yogo zoo kutuingi lense nsubize. So almost now over 40 years since they wandered in the wilderness. Emiaka jisukana angabeto lole da mudungu. And Moses recounts what happened while they were traveling. Kati Musa na jukirebi biyaba unga bata ambula mlugendo. And he tells them. Na haba gamba. I asked God to allow me to enter the promised land. I begged him. I pleaded with him. It's as if Moses prayed several times. Asking God to allow him to enter the promised land. Finally God said to Moses. Don't ever mention that to me again. I have said no. <laughs> and my no is no. Now, we want to see what caused that response. Why did God give what seemed like a harsh response to Moses? In Numbers chapter 20, we have an incident where Israel came to a place where there was no water. And the children of Israel began to protest and complain uh, about the situation. And as they protested, and were becoming almost violent, Moses and Aaron went before the Lord. And they lay prostrate on the ground. And God told Moses, Pick up your rod. Gather the people. Go and speak to the rock. In Numbers 20, we are told that Moses obeyed. He gathered the people. But he did something very, very, uh, very strange. In verse 10, Numbers 20, verse 10, turn there with me please. It, it, is, it is for your own good. Turn to your Bibles. Numbers 20, verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly. 
and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not, underline that phrase if you can in your Bible. Because you believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Kumi okubalabidi. Nti musane alon neba kunganiza echibina mumaso golwazi. Naba gamba nti muulire no mwaba jem fe tunaba tunaba jira wa mazi mulwazi muno. Musa na imuso mukono gwe, na kubo lwazi no mugo, no mugo gwe emirundi ebidi. A mazi manji negava muchibina, negava negava m echibina nebanywa, nebi sibo biawe. Mukama na gamba musa na loninti. Kubanga te munzi kiriza. O kuntu kuza. Mumaso gaba na baisraeli. Che muliva mulema. O kuyingida. O kuyingiza echibina chino monsi. Jemba wade. God was upset with Moses. Katonda ya nyigida musa. Because God gave a clear command to Moses. Kubanga ya liyamu wade chida gire chida ambulu kufobulu unji musa. He told him. Ya mugamba. Pick up your rod. Kwa to mugogo. But speak to the rock. Na ye yogeda edio luazi. Instead Moses disobeyed. A temu chifocho kole echo musa na jema. A clear and direct command. E chida gire chali e chida ambulu kufobulu unji nga chigufu. He grabbed his rod. Ya kwa to mugogo. And struck him the rock twice. That did not please God. Do you know why? Because God in the past had told him to strike the rock to bring out water. But this time, God sought to magnify himself in a new way. By telling Moses just to speak to the rock. And water would come out. So Moses made God appear as if he had run out of options. It's like having a good football player. No musambi wa kapiro mulunji. But he can only score with the right foot. Asobola kuteba goro With the right foot You can't use the left foot So when Moses struck the rock again So as if God had run out of options He can only get water by striking the rock He made God look less than what he was Moses disobeyed a clear and direct command from God. We have a problem now. Who is in charge, Moses or God? It's as if Moses was beginning to feel like he can do things his own way. God was upset with him. God is careful about his public image. Did you hear that? God is careful about his public image. He told Moses, you have not believed me. You have not trusted me. You have made me look less than what I am. You did something that worked before. Because you thought what I'm telling you is impossible. But you made me look less than what I am. Therefore he says you will not take Israel into the promised land. Something else happened. When he gathered the children of Israel, he told them, must we bring you water from the rock? He was taking credit for the miracle. 
Yali yetu aliranga ya uliranga echa magera chikola nga uliro kwenye mbiliza. He was drawing attention to himself. Yali ageza kwa kusikilizo kusikiliza wala. Banange all of us are human beings. Even mothers was beginning to backslide. Banange fena tuliba. Tunemusa ya ageza kwa kudema bego bo kuserela. There was a moment here I can see. Wali wechi sera wanochenda bobulunji. Where mothers were beginning to have some pride in his heart. Musa wata andikilo kubela na amalala motima gwe. Must we bring you water. He's himself unto Aaron. And God told him, For your sake, you will not enter the promised land. Moses Musa may have entered the promised land, but he could have missed out on the grand prize. It was possible at, at this trend for mothers to fall away from God. Yes, there was an element of knowing I am in charge. God may say something, but I can choose to do something else. There was a, a gradual drifting into pride and disobedience. That's why I say Moses was in danger of missing out on the grand prize. You may enter the promised land and miss heaven. You enter the promised land but fail to live with God Eternity. So God tells him, Moses, Musa, I will not allow you to enter the promised land. Because you're a man. You're beginning to fail. You're a man. I won't take you home before I lose you. You will not take them in the promised land. He told him, encourage Joshua. Motivate him. He will lead the children into the promised land. That's why I say an encouraging more Joshua was better than a decorated and revered Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. He may have been young, but he was better for Israel. He was better for the sake of Israel and for Moses than for Moses to lead Israel into the promised land. My point is this. It was good that God said no. Because Moses could have backslid in the promised land. There was a trend. He was becoming venerated, revered. He, he had become like a God. For his sake, and for the sake of Israel, God says you will not enter the first land to give the children of Israel their inheritance. But encourage Joshua. Joshua was younger. Not as venerated. Didn't have much problem with clout and, 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 and pride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So sometimes. God says no. Because he knows if he says yes, you may miss heaven. No man. No woman. No child. No fame. No political office. No amount of money. Is worth your place in heaven. That's why sometimes says no to that job. That's why God says no to that man. That's why God says no to that woman. You thought you were going to marry this woman. You dreamt of marrying this man. You dreamt of going to this other country. Whatever it is. 
when God weighs the options, he chooses something better for you. He may say no to what you want to make sure you get what you need. Do you hear that? God may say no to what you want to make sure you get what you need. No one is worth your place in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if you are sick and they tell you to get healed, you must go and visit a witch doctor. You are here believing in Jesus and you are getting worse and worse. You are getting worse, you are going to die. Take your Jesus and put him here somewhere go and get help from which doctor. I remember I met a woman in Mukono in Pastor Godfrey Mayanja's church. She was very sick. Very, very ill. So she could not move. She was bedridden. And our relatives were telling her there is a doctor here. We shall take care of all the costs. You just accept to take you there. They were telling her to go and, and, and get help from which doctor. She told me, Pastor, I have said no. Let me die in faith. Let me die in faith. I have prayed and prayed. God has said no to my healing. But I will not go and visit a witch doctor. I've come to tell you. Sometimes you have to just believe God. He has something better for you. I have said this. I will say it again. One of the way God heals people from disease is by taking them to heaven. Think about that. Someone cannot get better. He prayed and prayed. Sometimes God says it's time to come home where there's no sickness and there's no pain. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God says no, believe he has something far better. For Moses, it was better for him to miss Canaan and enter heaven. We know that in the Gospel of Matthew, Moses is in heaven because Jesus went up to the mountain of transfiguration. And guess who was there? who came to visit him from heaven? Moses and Elijah. The disciples saw Jesus standing with Elijah and Moses. And they said, let's, let's build three houses, one for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. So we know Moses entered heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. But he could have missed heaven. It was possible in the promised land. This man could have messed up big time. Hallelujah. The second example I want to show you in the Bible is the example of the Apostle Paul. I want to turn again to our Bible, the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12, verse 7 to verse 10. Turn there with me, please, in your Bibles. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. Because of time, we'll only read in English. Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations that were given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, 
I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul Omutume, went through many trials. Omutume, Paul, As you read the, 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 the New Testament, this man suffered for Christ. But there is one trial. He asked God to take away from him. The Bible speaks of a thorn. Now, scholars have speculated about what that thorn is. To be honest with you, we don't know. We don't know. I think God hid, to, uh, hid that detail from us so that all of us can identify with the Paul. You can put your phone in, in that place. <laughs> whatever it is. But whatever this thorn was in Paul's life, it caused pain. It was, uh, it was uncomfortable. It was embarrassing. It was irritable. It was irritating. It, was, it, 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 it made his life a little bit miserable. If you can imagine someone putting a thorn in your back. And now and again he pushes it this way and pushes it that way. Now, some people think that the thorn was a physical disability in the life of Paul. Some people think he was bold-legged. Uh-huh. Others think that he, he had crossed eyes. He had a problem with his eyes. Whatever the thorn was, it's probable that Paul had seen God heal that condition in other people's lives. Can you imagine? Paul had seen amazing miracles. I have not seen any person in all my life with the same level of anointing as Paul. A mere handkerchief, just a handkerchief like this, placed on people that are demon-possessed, placed on cripples and blind people, would be healed. That's the Paul we're talking about here. But there was a thorn. And the Bible says there were three occasions where he took particular time to pray with fasting. Maybe he spent several days praying with fasting. And every time he would pray, God would say no. But language, that's, that's not easy in life. Friends, when you fast, no, believe, no, believe no, you give, no, you tithe, no, you repent, no, you read your Bible, no, you pray, you pray. No, God says no. You try again. No, the no, man God. prayed three times with all his heart. Every time God says no, I've come to tell you, whenever God says no, he has something better. Expect something better to come your way. Whoever is watching this program this morning, if someone let you down, 
If you fail to get a job, if you lost someone whom you prayed for and believed God to heal, if some, if your fiance or fiancée let you down, whatever you've believed God for, maybe you are in a situation where your marriage has collapsed. It is irretrievable. You can't salvage it. It's, it's, it's gone down the drain. You tried and tried to hold on to your marriage. You prayed and believed God to change your spouse. But it's not worked out. I have come to remind you from the Bible when God says no it's because he has got something better for you by faith expect it by faith wait for it by faith receive it always God has something better he told Paul 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 I'm not going to remove that thorn because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. In other words, God revealed his power to a high level in the life of Paul. There are things he saw there are things he heard the miracles he saw that other apostles never experienced but every time these things happen in Paul's life people would know that's not Paul it must be God <laughs> it must be God when they saw Paul with his son they would know the power in his life was not because of a man. It was the power of God. Ah, God used Paul extraordinarily. The miracles in Paul's life, the things he saw, the revelations he had, none of their other apostles experienced them. So sometimes, God says no and he allows the phone to be in your side because he wants to display his power through you. I said God has got something better for you. When he says no because he got something better for you. I have a friend that I, I met in a church uh, in Pullman, Washington State, uh, many years ago. My wife probably remembers this man. This man, when you would meet him, he stammers. He can't speak a full sentence without stammering. He has a problem to speak normally. But sometimes when you meet him, he will not say much. You just nod his head. Because he had a speech problem. But I remember many times he would grab a microphone and prophesy. With no stammering at all. And you sense the power of God in the building. You say, is it the same man who stammers every other sentence? Yes. But when the power of God came upon him, the man would speak eloquently. Clearly. But with the power of God behind him. Mm -hmm. And all of us knew that was not the bride. That is God walking through him. God has got something better for you. In your infirmity, in the thorn you are carrying, God's strength 
Amen. 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 Paul confesses, he says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. That means, uh, Javan, come here. Javan, Javan, Javan come. Javan. When Paul says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. It means that because of the thorn, he can't walk by himself. The oh. thorn is very painful. He can't walk properly. So he has to lean on God. As he walks, he leans on God. Paul says, when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Because I walk with God. I depend on God. I lean on Him. I look to Him. I'm not on my own. When I'm weak, when the thorn is in my side, that's when I'm strong. Because I go to God. I can't live without Him. I can't walk without Him. I can't serve without Him. I depend on Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. When God says no, believe God that there's something better coming your way. Hallelujah. The last, oh no, the last, uh, two more points. The, next thing you need, need to do is to raise the shield of faith. When God says no, we raise the shield of faith. Whenever God does not answer your prayers, be sure the devil will offer you reasons. And bad people will join in. God is unreasonable and uncaring. You're not important to God. So and so got married. You are still single. Uh, God does not love you. Maybe you don't pray enough. Your prayers are weak. You're not holy. You're not righteous enough. Whenever God does not answer your prayer, I warn you. The devil will come and announce to you and give you reasons why your prayers are un un unanswered. And sometimes our relatives, our friends also join in. They will tell you, here you now you are now sick. You say you are a Where is your God now? He has not answered your prayer. Where is your faith? What has that helped you? If you had faith, you would be healed by now. If you had faith, your loved one would not have died. You say you are a Molokole. And you prayed for your spouse. You prayed for your child. And the child died. Where is now your faith? If you prayed with anointing, you'd be healed. You're still sick. If you're if if you're not if you if God has, hasn't answered your prayer, you must be having sin in your life. When God does not answer our prayers. The devil will give us reasons why. And nasty people will join in. In those moments, raise the shield of faith. Raise the shield of faith. Be like Job. Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. 
Even if he slay me, I'll still trust in him. Raise your shield of faith. Be determined to love the Lord. No matter what. Someone say amen out there. Amen. These are the things we go through in life. Some people have challenges as young women. Relatives are on their back. These things of being saved. For how long are you going to be single? You are now 50 years old. Still single. Ah, what's this? But the believer has trusted the Lord. She has walked with God. She has walked in purity. And for some reason, God has not answered her prayer. What do you do in such cases? What do you do in such cases? Raise the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Thirdly, and lastly, move on with God. When God says no, move on with God. Don't get stuck in those unanswered prayers. God told Moses, never mention that prayer again. Moses said, Amen. And he moved on. Today Moses is in heaven. Because God said no. I believe Moses could have perished in the promise. That's my, that's my, that's my opinion. Do you know something? God even personally buried him. No one was there to help God bury Moses. And the Bible tells us no one knows where his grave is. Only God knows where he buried him. Do you know why? The man had become so big in Israel. People would have come and worshipped at his grave. They would have worshipped his bones. So when God told Moses to go up the mountain, Nob, he never allowed anyone else to follow him. When he died, God alone buried him. Moses was the hope of Israel. Moses was the, the lead of Israel. He had become so highly venerated. And he also knew it. If he had continued in the promised land, it is possible he would have forsaken the Lord. He would have become too proud. But God told him, don't pray anymore that way. And he accepted and he moved on. I've come to tell you when God says no, don't get stuck. No, God, but God. But you know, God, but God. You, you, you continue to insist. The, the brother has left, left you and does not want to marry you. And he's marrying someone else. Then you go to Seguku and fast and pray. That that marriage wedding does not take place. You still believe he's your husband. No, when God says no, move on. Move on. I remember David. Had a son who was ill. And David spent a week. Praying and fasting. He lay on the ground. He put on sackcloth. If you get time, read it in 2 Samuel chapter 12. 
He hoped that God would heal the child. He did everything he could do as a father. And he spent day and night on the floor crying to God, Lord, spare the child. This is my sins. Don't, don't take the child. God said, no. And the child died. The Bible says, Bible the servants feared to tell David. Because when he knew that the child was sick, he was really beaten up. He was on the ground weeping. He refused to take a shower. He refused to eat and drink anything. And slept on the ground. The servant said, if you tell him now that the child is dead, he might do something but himself. So they held back the information. David looked at them <laughs> and he says there was something wrong. So he asked them is the child dead? And they said yes O king. He got up <laughs> went into the house took a shower put on some oil on himself asked for food <laughs> and moved on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Move on with God. There is a time to grieve. And there is a time to stop grieving. Move on with the purpose and the will of God for your life. I am not belittling grieving. Don't get me wrong. When Moses died, Israel mourned for 30 days. 30 days they were grieving and mourning for Moses finally God said enough is enough Joshua get up you will now lead these people into the promised land we have to move on you never got that job thank God praise the Lord God has got something better for me move on with God hallelujah sometimes when we get a no from God we push a pause button on our life uh, we pause and insist and hope and, and, and we become bitter. We become angry. Eh? We, we, become, we, we, we become a problem to others. Hear me very well. Even if you press a pause button on life, life continues to go on. Life will continue to go on. Just because you've pressed the pause button doesn't mean that life comes to stand still. So when God says no, believe that he's got something better. Raise the shield of faith and move on with God. The will of God for your life. Hallelujah. I want us to close in prayer. Wherever you are, just bow your head. I want us to pray together with you. Father, there are many people who are watching this program this morning who have an unanswered prayer who are about to encounter an unanswered prayer. Wherever we are this morning, Father, strengthen your people. Help us. The end of the world has not come because you've said no. Father, we pray that there will be faith to so continue to walk with you to, to fulfill your will and purpose in our life. I commit your people into your hands. Those who are hurting, those who are grieving, those who are sick, 
of lost loved ones. Father, strengthen them and comfort them. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God.